What's up you guys, Nishi from MSTTV here. And I know you guys really look forward to this segment, but we really haven't done one in a little while. But I'm here to bring you guys another Market Watch episode. So normally we're at kind of a downtime at this point in the year, uh, as far as Yu-Gi-Oh card prices go, because we have Worlds coming up and we just had Nationals finishing, and everyone's really concerned about price, uh, the prices of cards changing with the new ban list always around the corner. Uh, but we just had a new set dropped, and with that there was a lot of new support and a lot of people are very curious about what the different card prices are. So I'm gonna, I'm here to kind of go over, uh, just to update you guys on the card prices from Clash of Rebellions, uh, bring to you guys' attention a few cards that I know a lot of people have been talking about, kind of been hyping up, and a couple of cards that maybe you guys should be holding on to for the near future. Alright, so first up, uh, this Archetype actually got a lot of support from Dragons of Legend 2. I'm going to talk about Toons. So Toons, they're a really, really old archetype. They're actually from the original series, and they started off in Magic Ruler or Spell Ruler. Uh, but a few different cards have actually gone up quite a bit, uh, just because they're associated with the Toon deck, and everyone's kind of hyped about that. So the first card is Toon Table of Contents, uh, as a super rare from Turbo Pack 6. Uh, this card is anywhere from $30 to $40. I think that at one point it was hyped so much that it was at $50. And honestly, I mean, Toon Table of Contents, of course, it's like a Rota. It searches for almost anything in the deck, and it's absolutely essential. But, I mean, it's easily available as a rare uh, from Duelist Pack Battle City, or it's a common. So if you guys are holding on to this card, unless you guys are like a really big rarity whore, I definitely think that this is a card you guys should be letting go of. Uh, just because I like the tune deck is obviously very inconsistent, not really viable, and I think the card is the price of the card is naturally going to tank. Uh, so if you have it, I definitely let go of this. Uh, the second card is Tune Masked Sorcerer. So people have been quoting this uh, card as having a twenty to twenty-five dollar price tag online, just because it's only ever been released as a common or a rare. Uh, but more realistically, you're looking at paying around ten dollars for the card. Um, if you guys want to play the Tune Deck, uh, I think, like personally, I wouldn't pay ten dollars for a rare like this. But I think that anywhere between five and ten dollars is a fair price. But I mean, this is a card that I'm sure a lot of you guys may have at home. Really, like, no one's really looked out for this card recently in the past. So maybe dig through your common and rare box, and if you can, maybe sell it for a few bucks. And the last old card is Toon Cannon Soldier. Uh, this is an ultra rare from Turbo Pack, and it's been hyped up to anywhere from $25 to $30. Uh, but I actually don't think that Toons even play Toon Cannon Soldier. They might play one copy, uh, just because its burn effect isn't that great, and it's not a key part of the deck. So I mean, it's a Turbo Pack Ultra Rare. If you guys have them lying around and you can find someone who's willing to pay up for this card, uh, then go ahead and get rid of it. Uh, but I don't think it's something that you guys should like freak out about and go and look for. Alright, so in Dragons of Legend 2 we also had two new cards that were really, really highly anticipated. Uh, so the first one, which basically makes the deck even a little bit viable, is Toon Kingdom. So this is their new field spell that's treated as Toon World. And this card, when it, the set was first dropped, was actually anywhere from $20 to $30, and everyone was really, really hyped about it, uh, just because it wasn't uh, very widely printed. I think there were only a few cards that were made available in the set that were one per box, and Toon Kingdom was one of them. Toon Kingdom's, uh, it's obviously a very key card in the deck. You need to play three copies, but, I mean, it's not for the average player, it's not really something that you're going to want to hold on to and invest in because it's only good in the deck. So if you uh, have it, I think that if you're selling it, you should try to sell it for around $20, um, even $15. If you're buying it, personally, I'd only pay around $15 for it because I think the deck, again, the deck's all hype and it's the prices are just going to tank in the near future. And the last card that came from the set that I want to talk about is Mimicat. So Mimicat's a normal spell card, and it lets you copy an opponent's spell or trap card from their graveyard, or a monster card, and either summon that monster or set that spell or trap to your side of the field. Um, this card is 
most players agree that you play one to two copies of this card in the deck because it does require you to control both a Toon World and a Toon Monster to activate this card. So this card's price, again, this is a card from Dragons of Legend 2 that was only really, you see like maybe one of them per box. So a lot of people kind of freaked out about it. Uh, the price jumped as high as 30 to $35. If you are so lucky as to pull this card from one of your packs, uh, I definitely try to get rid of it as soon as you can. It's not even a three of like Toon Kingdom. It's a one to two of, so if you can get uh, 25, even $20 for this card, I think it's still not that bad. All right guys, so now we're gonna go into a few of the different archetypes that receive support from Clash of Rebellions. So Konami being Konami, they kind of screwed all of us and Rarity bumped a whole ton of cards from this set. And uh, I think the most notable Rarity bumps here were specifically with the Red Eyes archetype. So a lot of people who started playing the game really, really early uh, kind of got like infatuated with the archetype basically because so many of the cards look so cool and there's a lot of hype around it. But ultimately the deck is really, really inconsistent and I personally don't see the deck being any higher than tier two. Uh, nevertheless, Konami managed to bump all of the rarities and make the Red Eyes deck really, really hard to complete. So we're gonna go over a few of those cards. Uh, the first one being Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon. This is the Ixies and it's probably one of my favorite card artworks of all time. Uh, this card was available as a secret rare, uh, an ultimate rare, and a ghost rare. Uh, the ghost rare is not that great because you can't really see the picture, but the ultimate rare is beautiful. You absolutely have to check it out if you haven't already. Anyways, uh, so the ghost rare at the moment is floating around on eBay for around $20 to $25 in that range, uh, whereas the ultimate and the secret rare are floating anywhere between $15 and $20. Uh, ultimately, I think that this is still a little bit high for the card. I'd pay a maximum of $20 for the ghost rare and a maximum of $15 for the secret or the ulti, but I think that these prices in the end are gonna float down to $15 for the Ghost Rare and $10 for the Ulti and Secret. Uh, just because even though it's a generic monster, uh, rank sevens aren't very popular at the moment. The Red Eyes deck, while popular, isn't very viable, and the cards just are naturally gonna kinda decline as more and more people have access to them. Uh, so the second card is the Blackstone of Legend. I know that at Sneak Peek, this card was anywhere from $25 to $30, uh, but at the moment, it's between 15 and 20. I can definitely see this card continuing to tank. I agree, it's a really, really good card in the archetype, but like I've said so many times, the deck isn't great. And I think ultimately, it's gonna settle between 10 to 12, maybe $15. So if you have it and you can get rid of it for $15 now, I think that, that would be a, this is a great time to sell it while it's still a little bit higher. Uh, if you're looking to pick up the deck, uh, just because you like the cards, I think $10, maybe $12 is a really good price for it. And the last card from that archetype that kind of has received a bit of hype is Cards of the Red Stone. This is an ultra rare, and it's definitely a card that you're going to want to play two or three of in the deck because it gives the deck a considerable amount of draw power, and it lets you Foolish Burial of Red Eyes, which is good. Uh, right now the card's sitting anywhere from $10 to $12, but I mean, this card is good, but it, eh, I don't see the price staying very high because it's an archetype specific card and the hype for the archetype is going to die off as time goes on. I see realistically this as being a five to seven dollar card. So if you have it, get rid of it for 10. If you want to play it, uh, wait till it hits around five or seven dollars and then I think that's a safe time to go for it. Uh, okay, so the next archetype that I want to talk about is Arrow Mages. So a lot of people are upset that Arrow Mages got rarity bumped, and I'm kind of one of those people just because I've se I haven't really seen the Arrow Mage deck, but I've read all the cards, and they seem terrible. Like, the cards, the individual cards themselves may be alright, but the deck as a whole I don't think is very good. Uh, but they received both an Ultra Rare and a Secret Rare. So the Secret Rare Arrow Mage Jasmine at Sneak Peek was anywhere from $20 to $25. Uh, 
uh, at the moment it's a $15 card but because there are, there's so little interest in the archetype because of how bad the deck is I can definitely see Jasmine uh, dropping to anywhere from five to ten dollars I think this is a much more realistic price range for the card and uh, if you have it if you're really really unlucky and you buy a box of this set and you pull Jasmine I'm really really sorry but you're gonna have to sell it for the 12 to 15 dollars that you can get it for it um, the other card that got rarity bumped was Aeromage Rosemary. This is an ultra rare from the set. Um, at the moment, it's around $10. I personally, I wouldn't pay more than $5 for it, even if I was interested in building the archetype. I think realistically, it's going to settle at around $3 to $5. So again, if you have it, I'm sorry, but you're, you should probably get rid of it now while you can. Okay, so the last archetype is actually a TCG exclusive archetype. And just over this past weekend, if you look at the ARG top 8 deck lists, the top 4 spots actually went to this archetype, and that is the Cosmos. So this is kind of a combined uh, Star Wars with the Wizard of Oz, which I kind of thought was a weird combination. But apparently that's what Konami is going to go with, and they received 3 rares, 1 ultra rare, and 1 super rare. So the super rare is Good Witch, and the ultra rare is Farm Girl. So the ultra rare is, a lot of people were really, really concerned about the deck uh, because the last TCG exclusive archetype that we received in Burning Abyss that received a lot of attention from Konami turned out to be one of the best decks of the format, of multiple formats, and received continuous support and was con consistently seen in the top decks of most major events. Uh, I believe Burning Abyss also even won our Nationals. So if that doesn't get you hyped up for this next TCG exclusive archetype, I don't know what will. Um, but a lot of people are anticipating that this deck is going to be really, really good with the next couple of sets that are coming out. And even with the limited card pool it has, it's already seen quite a bit of play. So Farm Girl at Sneak. Uh, I know people were kind of not too hyped about it. Like people would. It depended on who you were talking to. Some people wanted $40 for Farm Girl, whereas other people were happy to get $20. And then it kind of died down as the set got released and it settled at around $30. But if you look at the ARG decklist, and just from going on and checking eBay and a lot of sites online, the card is actually jumping up to anywhere between $40 and $50. And this is kind of crazy because it's only an ultra rare and it's receiving that much attention. Um, if you have it, uh, it kind This card kind of depends on where you think the archetype is going to go. If this is a deck that you want to save and invest in and maybe play uh, as more and more cards in the archetype are released, then I think it's a card you should definitely hold on to. Uh, if you think the archetype is going to tank, then maybe get rid of it now while everyone's kind of building hype about it. Uh, personally, I'm really curious to see what the deck's going to do. I'm very, very surprised that it took so many top spots at the ARG. and. Uh, Honest, in my honest opinion, I think that you guys should be holding on to the cards if you can get them for around $30 to $40. If you can find someone willing to pay more than $50, like say $55 or $60, then yeah, I think it's pretty safe to say that you should go ahead and get rid of it. But $30 to $40 I think is a very safe range for you to invest your money in and pick up a few copies of Farm Girl. And the other one, Cosmo Goodwitch, this is just a super rare. Um, important thing for you guys to note, uh, unlike the past couple sets, we don't have the same super edition, so we're not guaranteed reprints of all the super rares, and you still have to pull them from the packs themselves. Uh, you can't just buy a special edition and be guaranteed to get a super rare from that. So naturally, the prices of the super rares from this set are going to be slightly higher than the super rares we've seen in previous sets. If you guys think back, uh, cards like Castell the Sky Blaster Musketeer, or Abyss Dweller, or Gaga Ga Cowboy are all super rares that have easily hit anywhere from $15 to $20. Uh, so don't sleep on the super rares. Uh, Cosmo Goodwitch, if the deck again does become viable, it's definitely going to be a card that you want to play three of. It's a card that you should have handy. So same logic as Farm Girl. If you can get rid of it for $20, go ahead. But if you think that you want to play the deck or you want to see where the deck is going to go and you're expecting the deck to do okay, uh, this is definitely a card that you guys should be holding on to for at least a little while. Alright guys, so that's it for specific archetypes that I really wanted to go over. 
Um, now we're going to go into a few more generic cards. Uh, so cards that don't really belong into any archetype specifically, but card where cards where prices have changed that you guys really should be aware of. So first of all, we're going to go over a few notable cards that have been really, really hyped up in price. So first of all, we're going with Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. Uh, this card recently uh, settled down to around $40 as of last weekend, but as of Wednesday, this card spiked up to anywhere from $60 to $75 online. Uh, I don't really know what's up with this card. I mean, I agree that it's a good card, and I know Oscar's really, really into this card, but I don't really see the reason for it. I, It's a card that maybe Cosmos are going to play, because it is a Psychic type, and they do play Emergency Teleport in Cosmos, but honestly, there isn't really any specific reason that Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit should be this price. Uh, so if you guys have this card, and you guys can find someone who's willing to pay $60 or $70 for it, I definitely think that this is a time for you to get rid of it. If you, do, if you don't have it, and it's something that you want to pick up to play with, I... I honestly don't think that it's reasonable for you to go out and pay this much. I think that a good amount of money would be $40 to $50. I think this is a very reasonable price range for this card to be at. And if you want it, I think this is where you should be looking to buy it within. Okay, so the second card is Into the Void. Uh, this is a card that if you have three or more cards in your hand, it lets you draw a card. So it's like an upstart goblin. Uh, but you have to ditch your entire hand during the end phase. Uh, so into the Void, the entire reason that this card's been hyped is because of two decks. So the first being Chicken Race, uh, which you guys uh, will have seen in our previous video, and Clipport uh, Towers Turbo. Uh, Towers plays three copies of this card because they want to drop Towers as quickly as possible and kind of let Towers carry them through the rest of the game. And this card... I mean, a lot of the reason for this card being the price that it is, is because the card has never ever been reprinted. It's only available as an ultra rare and an ultimate rare from the set that it was printed in first. And as a result, the ultra rare is between $20 and $25, and the ultimate rare is somewhere between $25 and $30. Uh, personally, I think that this is a ridiculous price to pay for such a card. Um, I don't think that it's... I mean, it's necessary in the deck, but I wouldn't go out of my way to pay this much money for it. Uh, really, I think you guys should be paying between $15 and $20 for the Ultra, maybe, and then possibly like around $20 to $25 for the Ultimate. Even that's a little bit high. Uh, but I just want you guys to be aware of this price increase. And if you guys have copies of this card at home, uh, it should be something that you guys dig through your binders for and maybe get rid of for like an easy $20. Uh, just because I think before this, the card was maybe five at maximum ten dollars so if you have it at home definitely dig through it and try to get rid of it uh, so the third card that i want to talk about is cactus bouncer and this is a card where if you control another plant type monster your opponent cannot special summon monsters so it's a vanity's emptiness um, and this card the entire reason that this card has hype surrounding it is because of arrow mages and i talked about the arrow mages earlier uh, honestly i think they're a terrible deck and <coughs> Cactus Bouncer is kind of just like it's almost like their win condition. They need the card in order to function against a lot of the top tier decks. But honestly, I don't think that the deck is going to survive. And as a result, I don't think that Cactus Bouncer is going to be good at all. Um, if you do play the deck, you play it. Um, but as less and less people try to innovate and be creative with the deck, uh, less and less people will also need Cactus Bouncer. So right now, it's anywhere from 10 to $20, mostly around $15. Um, but honestly, I think that this card's going to tank. It's going to easily hit between $5 and $10 within the next month or so. If you guys have them at home, uh, definitely just get rid of them. They were like a 2 or $3 card before, so you guys probably overlooked it. And the last card is Overdrive Teleporter. This is a secret rare. It's a six star monster that uh, you can pay 2,000 life points to special summon two level three or lower psychic monsters out of the deck. A lot of people are kind of uh, hyping this card because it has the potential to be played in Cosmos. So Cosmos are another psychic type deck. So a lot of people are kind of curious as to what psychic cards uh, that had potential before 
uh, could be good in this new deck. And Overdrive Teleporter is one of those cards because it's kind of like a Rescue Rabbit, um, but I honestly don't think it's that great of a card because first of all, you have to tribute summon it, which means you have to already have a monster on the field to tribute in the first place. Uh, you have to pay 2,000 life points to use it, and it can be negated. I mean, we have so much effect negation because of cards like Trishula. You have to play, like, a lot of decks are playing Breakthrough Skill, Fiendish Chains, Effect Veilers, um, just all of these effect negation cards that really make the use of Overdrive Teleporter impractical. I agree that if you do successfully resolve Overdrive Teleporter's effect and bring out two Farm Girls and then manage to deal damage with those two Farm Girls, uh, you're probably winning the game pretty soon. But honestly, I don't think, I think it's a consistency issue. Uh, I looked at the ARG deck lists over um, the weekend and none of them were playing Overdrive Teleporter. So if you do have that card lying around at home, uh, it's anywhere from like 20 to $25, something ridiculous like that. If you can find people who are willing to buy into the hype, uh, definitely get rid of the card to them. But, I mean, I don't see the deck, the card as being very good in that deck, um, so I don't think it's a card that you should go out of your way to invest in. Okay, so there are a few other cards that are kind of, uh, they're not really secret rares, so I didn't feel that they deserved all of the hype that those previous cards were getting, but there's still price increases that are worth note noting and uh, cards that you should be checking your binders at home for. Uh, so two cards that kind of go hand in hand here are Owner Seal and Remove Brainwashing. So both of these cards are cards that if you have cards on your opponent's side of the field that belong to you, uh, it returns them back to your control. Um, so I think there's a strategy with Lava Golem and Volcanic Queen, where you summon a bunch of guys to your opponent's board and clear theirs, and then you owner seal or remove brainwashing and you take control of them again, and you attack them for a lot of damage. And with the recent release of Kaijus in the Clash of Rebellion set, uh, this card has kind both of these cards have actually gone up quite a bit, and they're floating for anywhere from like five to seven dollars at the moment, which I think is ridiculous because the cards are frankly not good at all, but I mean, it is what it is. The Yu-Gi-Oh market is going to react how they're going to react. Um, so if you can, like, dig through your common boxes. You guys, I, I know I have, like, at least two play sets of Remove Brainwashing in my common box at home that I have to go dig up later. So maybe it might be worth it for you guys to go and dig them up and maybe get rid of them if you can at Locals. And two other cards that are kind of recently hyped. Uh, these are related to Ignites. So Ignites are a very um, search-heavy pendulum deck that lets you pop two scales that are ignites and then search for another ignite. Of course, those two ignites are going to go to your extra deck and you just keep on replacing the scales, fill up your extra deck, and then spam an OTK. So, of course, these are all vanilla monsters and two cards that have received quite a bit of attention uh, because these are normal monsters are Heat Wave and Tyrant Throws. So Heat Wave is a card, it's a normal spell card from Star Strike Blast. Um, it has to be activated at the start of your main phase one. So it's a little bit of an issue there. Um, but while until the end of your opponent's next turn, neither player can normal or special summon effect monsters. And of course this isn't a problem for Ignites because they are all vanillas. So you're basically saying your opponent cannot summon, I'm gonna summon, I'm gonna kill you with all of these guys. Which, okay, that's a decent win condition. <clears throat> and Tyrant Throws is more or less the same thing, but it's in trap card form. So it's a continuous trap, you tribute two vanillas you control, and it puts the same condition. Uh, uh, neither player can normal or special summon effect monsters. Which is a little bit... Uh, it's a little bit cheesy in a way, right? Because it's a floodgate that requires you to tribute off the two ignites, but it's saying your opponent can't play monsters. Um, both of these cards are really, really, they're only connected to Ignites. And as a result, the price has gone up to anywhere from $3 to people asking for as much as $10. Obviously, the $10 price is absolutely ridiculous. I think that uh, somewhere between $3 to $5 is a more realistic price for the card, um, for either of these cards, actually. Um, they're just rares. If you have them at home, uh, I know I had a set of Heat Wave lying around for no reason whatsoever. So if you go home, uh, check your boxes, 
And if you have those cards, I definitely think they're cards you should bring to locals. Uh, I know a lot of different people are trying out Ignite, so if you can get rid of them, then go ahead and do it. Uh, if not, uh, don't worry about it. If you want to play the deck, I think they're very good cards in the deck. They're a little bit cheesy, but if you can pull it off, then why not? Alright guys, last but not least, I'm going to go over a few different cards that I think are going to be really, really good in the future and that you guys should probably be investing in right now if you can get them for cheap. Okay, so the first card is Horn of Heaven. Uh, Horn of the Heaven is actually a really, really old card. This card's from Metal Raiders, the second set to have ever been released, and it's a counter trap where you tribute one monster of yours to negate the normal or special summon of your opponent's monster. And this card has received very, very under-the-radar hype because we don't really, really know um, exactly how good it's going to be, but a lot of people are anticipating that it's going to be seeing a lot of play in the near future. And this is mostly because of Pendulums coming out within the next couple of sets. Uh, so Dimensions of Chaos and the Magus Spectre or Pendulum Magician Structure deck that's coming out in November. So a lot of people are saying, okay, Horn of Heaven's going to be good in that deck, uh, so we're going to pick them up now. Uh, so Super Rare Tournament Pack 3. Uh, this is a really, really old set. Uh, Horn of Heaven came out as a super rare from this set, and at the moment is between $20 and $25 a piece on eBay, or on Troll and Toad at least, and just online in general. Um, I actually really didn't even know that the card came in super rare. So if you guys have boxes of cards lying around, or if you see it maybe in someone's binder that they've overlooked, um, I definitely think, well, why not, you should go ahead and pick up these cards. Uh, at the same time, if you can like get an ultra rare or a secret one for maybe like a dollar or two, I definitely think that this is a worthwhile investment because, I mean, you're only putting up a dollar or two, but it has like potential upside of between five and ten dollars. Um, so if you can get these cards for cheap, uh, I definitely think it's something that you should be holding on to. And fun little story here, uh, you guys all know Oscar, also from our channel. Uh, Oscar decided to go into the binder at our locals, and he picked out seven ultra rare copies of Horn of Heaven. And he gave me three of them because he's a nice guy, right? So unfortunately, one of them that I picked, uh, that I got from him was damaged. Uh, it was a little bit bent in the corner. So I go back into the binder, and I'm looking for more Horn of Heavens, and I see that there are super rares. And at this point, I didn't even know that super rare Horn of Heaven existed. But I look at the little print in the uh, above the text box, and it says that they're from TP3. And there's two of them for $2 each, and I'm so happy. So I call over, I'm like, hey, Oscar, there are TP supers in here. Why didn't you get them? Are they damaged or something? something? And he freaks out, and he goes, what? What do you mean there's TP supers in there? And of course, me being the dick that I am, I kept them for myself because they were only a couple dollars each. And look at where they are now. <laughs> so yeah, just a little bit of a fun story in there. Um, the next card that I think you guys should be holding on to is Mist Valley Apex Avion. And this is very much for the same reason as Horn of Heaven. Uh, it's just the ability to abuse the pendulum mechanic. So we all know that with pendulums you basically, uh, you can special summon monsters from your hand or extra deck. And Mist Valley Apex Avion, you can bounce it back to your hand from the field to negate uh, certain card effects. And so the idea here is when you do Pendulum Summon, uh, you Pendulum Summon out the Apex Avion, and then regardless of what your opponent's going to do, you get a free negation every single turn. So this is really, really, um, this is a really big card in the OCG. And already at the moment, even without the proper Pendulum support, the Secret Rares are about $10 and the Dual Terminal ones are around $15. But I think that this is still a bit on the low end because I think that the TCG hasn't fully reacted to the potential here. And I think that the Secret Rare could easily hit $20. So if you guys are around at Locals, um, if you guys see any Mist Valley Apex Avions floating around, um, I know a lot of people aren't aware of this hype yet. If you can grab Secret Rare copies for like 2 or $3, I, I just pick up all of them. Uh, even if you sell them now for like 10 bucks, you're still making money back, but it's a card that can only go up in the future right now. I mean, barring like a really, really common reprint, right? Like I don't see that happening though. I think that it's a card that's definitely gonna go up as pendulums become more and more popular. 
And the last couple of cards that I want to talk about kind of go hand in hand here. And this is uh, two cards that were actually released in Clash of Rebellions, uh, but haven't actually seen as much hype as they deserve. These are Luster Pendulum the Draco Slayer and Ignister Prominence the Blasting Draco Slayer. Uh, most of the attention here should be on the first one. This is a super rare Pendulum monster, and its Pendulum effect is that you can pop your other Pendulum scale while it's in your Pendulum zone to search your deck for another copy of the card you popped with the same name. Uh, so basically this adds one card to your extra deck and it's thinned your deck by a card and it's a scale five. The scale five isn't really helpful. It's, it's not a great number to have on the scale, but it's giving you another free card from your deck. Your deck is one card thinner. Um, so I definitely think uh, that this is a card that's going to be a three of in the future. I don't know why it's only a $5 card right now, but if you guys can, I'd grab as many copies as you can. Remember, this is a super rare and it's not getting the guaranteed reprint. Um, so I can see when pendulums become a really, really mainstream thing and all of the meta decks are kind of playing pendulums. I think that Luster Pendulum is easily a $10 to $15 super rare in the future. Um, and with this is Ignister Prominence, the Blasting Draco Slayer. This is an ultra rare and an ultimate rare uh, in the same set, Clash of Rebellions. Um, but because uh, Luster Pendulum was a tuner, uh, Luster Pendulum can only make Ignister Prominence at the moment. But Ignister Prominence is a really good card. Basically, you pop one of your Pendulums and you spin a card on your opponent's field back into the deck, but it doesn't target and it's also pretty big, it's an 8 star, I don't remember how many attack points it has, but it's basically a free big guy on board, uh, because you have that uh, Luster Pendulum already in your extra deck, uh, you're likely to have at least like one or two copies in there, and it's a free synchro monster that's going to let you spin something back, and the Pendulum that you pop is going to go back into your extra deck anyways, and honestly I think it's just a really really great card. At the moment the Ultra Rare is only $5, Whereas the Ultimate Rare is only like 7 or $8 for some reason. And I think that these two cards really go hand in hand. And they're going to see more and more play as Pendulums become more and more popular. So if you do have a chance to pick up these cards, it's something you definitely should do. I'd go ahead and I'd buy them for around those prices. And last but not least, um, just something I kind of want to mention quickly. I know it's, we're in August right now and September is just around the corner, but we have the Megatins coming out. We already know about a few guaranteed reprints. We have Odd Eyes Rebellion Dragon and Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon as the cover cards. And we have guaranteed reprints of Castell the Sky Blaster Musketeer and Majesty's Fiend, as well as the release of Elder God Noden. So uh, I don't want to say too much about this. These I talked about this in our last Market Watch episode, which you guys will be able to see right here. But um, just a quick reminder, if you guys do have cards from Primal Origin, uh, Duelist Alliance, or New Challengers, so these are cards from Artifacts, uh, the Shadal, the Telenite, uh, the Yang Zing, and the Clipboard Archetypes, um, and also possibly Dante, just really be wary of these cards getting a confirmed reprint in September. Uh, so if you guys are holding on to these cards and you're not really attached to them or anything and you don't really care about rarities, I think now is a great time to get rid of them because as soon as the reprint drops, these cards are all going to start tanking in price and you guys don't want you guys don't want to lose your money there. So if you can, I definitely get rid of cards from these certain decks. All right guys, that's it for this episode. Um, I really do hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Market Watch. I know it's a bit of a long video. Um, if you guys do like this video, please make sure you guys give me a thumbs up. And if you guys think I missed any card prices or you want to ask me any questions, uh, make sure you guys leave a comment down below. And of course, if you want to see more, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And of course, until next time, please make sure you hold on to your MST.TV.